Good evening, and welcome to our Cherry Hill High School East Guidance Virtual Senior College Night. My name is George Zografos, otherwise known as Mr. Z, and I'm the supervisor of the guidance department, as well as the proud grade level principal for the class of 2021. Thank you for attending and spending this time with us to learn how to help your child apply to college. The guidance department is here to assist you throughout the process and that is the purpose of tonight's Senior College Night. To help frame the evening, you will see a pre-recorded video explaining all the parts of the senior meeting given by the guidance counselors, which will be very helpful in the college application process. This video will be placed on the guidance website tomorrow, so you can view it multiple times if you desire. At the conclusion of the video, there will be five Google Meet links available so you can attend a live session with your child's counselor to answer any questions you may have. Please click on the appropriate Google Meet link that lists your child's counselor at the conclusion of the video. Since we are in a group meeting, please refrain from asking specific and personal questions regarding your child and their college aspirations. These questions can be directed to your child's counselor at a later time. We will also offer another live Google Meet time during the day with the counselors in case someone either wasn't able to attend tonight's presentation or if you would just like to sit in on another live Google Meet presentation for more information. An email with the date, time, and Google Meet links will be sent out as soon as possible. Additionally, on the Senior College Night website, you will also see a very important tab for supporting documents which you may also find helpful. Many of the topics discussed this evening were located in the document section, as well as a helpful college application checklist. Thank you for attending, and I wish all of the students and parents the best of luck as you navigate through the college application process. It is a lot of fun. Please feel free to contact your student's counselor with any questions or if you need further assistance. I hope you enjoy the evening and thank you again for attending. Hi, this is Darren Gallimo, one of the counselors at Cherry Hill East, and I'm here tonight to walk you through our virtual senior meeting, or at least parts of the virtual senior meeting. So what you should see in front of you is the senior meeting document that was emailed to you prior to tonight. And we're basically gonna go through this entire document in order and explain everything and give you everything you need to know about the important senior meeting information. So first and foremost, you'll notice the first bullet point there, transcript verification. If you haven't already received your transcript from your counselor, you will be receiving it soon. And the thing that you need to do is check over your transcript, make sure everything looks accurate and up to date, and then acknowledge that accuracy by signing off on it in the Google form that was linked in the email. Once every senior has done that, and it is required of every senior to do, once every senior has done that, then GPA and rank can become official and we can start sending transcripts soon after that to colleges. So please make sure you verify and sign off on your transcript through the Google form. And that leads us to the second bullet point there, which will then allow us to update your GPA and make your class rank official. That information will be posted in Naviance, usually in early October. And I will send an email out to you through Naviance, letting you know that your GPA and class rank have been updated in Naviance. The next bullet point there, graduation requirements. Hopefully, if you have any concerns about your graduation requirements, you've reached out to your counselor with those concerns or maybe your counselor has reached out to you with their concerns. Either way, just double check that you are meeting all the graduation requirements that you should be. And now getting into the most important part of the night here with uh, starting off with the Common Application. So everyone should basically be using the Common App for a good majority of their applications. So the Common App is, and I'll switch over tabs here so you can follow along with me. So the Common App is one of the largest application vehicles out there. 
It's accepted at over 900 colleges currently. And so if you are applying to a college and multiple colleges, chances are that college or those colleges are on the Common App and accepted by the Common App. So Common App is designed to save you time. You fill out the application once and you can submit it to up to 20 colleges if you so choose. So when you go to the Common App website, you'll be greeted with this page here. You're gonna to need to create an account by clicking on that create account button. And then it's gonna walk you through some steps here. You are a first year student. And then you're gonna fill in all the required information. Notice the red star or the red asterisk here indicates required questions. So you can't move on without completing those required questions. The same thing is true throughout the entire Common App. Anything that is required is indicated with a red star or asterisk. So you'll fill in this information here, email, password, make sure you save that password somewhere because it's a long and complicated one. Uh, basic information, name, date of birth, address, all that good stuff. And you'll also have to check off, you understand their privacy policy and their terms of use, and then you'll hit create an account. That then leads you into the Common App homepage which will look something similar to this. And the Common App tab, you'll see all these five tabs up here. The Common App tab is the main application tab where you'll complete all of your demographic information. These are all the different subsections indicated on the Common App, your profile, your family information, education, testing, activities, writing, and courses and grades. So if you'll notice here, uh, I have a green check mark next to the education section here. And basically you're shooting for all green check marks all along that left hand side. Once you have all green check marks on the left hand side, that's basically when you know you are at the point where you can submit your application to whatever colleges you're applying to. So the first thing that you should do after you complete some basic demographic information in the profile section is the education section. It'll ask you about your high school. Most of you will just be putting information in about High School East. Some of you, if you transferred, you'll have to put in information about your previous schools as well. Again, notice the green check marks. That's always your goal is to get a green check mark for each subsection within these uh, larger sections here. And once you've completed the education section, you'll be able to add colleges to your Naviance. So for Demonstration purposes here, uh, to add a college, you'll just click on college search. You'll type in whatever college it is you want to search for, or even just part of the name, and these colleges will come up here. And you can then select that college and add that college into your colleges you're applying to list. So once you have some colleges or at least one college in your colleges you're applying to list, you'll click on one of those colleges. And I'm gonna show you one of the most important parts of the Common App and sometimes one of the trickiest parts of the Common App and that is the recommenders and FERPA section. So you'll see here under this college and it doesn't matter, you click on any college, you'll see the same information. You see these three sections here under this college and you'll see the second one is recommenders and FERPA. If you click on that, it's gonna walk, walk you through the FERPA release authorization, which is necessary for you to complete on the Common App in order for us to send transcripts, letters of recommendation, and all that information about you. So you must complete this. So you're gonna click on complete the release authorization. These instructions will explain what the FERPA is, how it relates to you, and all that good information. You're gonna check off, you've read and understood the FERPA release authorization explained above. Okay. Now you're gonna check off that you acknowledge that East and any other high school that you might've attended is going to send records and transcripts and letters of recommendation about you to those colleges that you're applying to. So that's pretty standard. This is where it gets a little tricky for some students. You have a choice here of either waiving your right to review all the recommendations and supporting documents that are sent about you or not waiving that right. So it's not so important how you answer this question, just that you answer it, period. 
90% um, or more, I would say, of students waive their right to review everything that's sent about them to the one college they actually attend. And that is because essentially you're saying you trust the process. You trust that if you ask a teacher to write a letter of recommendation for you and they say yes, they're going to write a good letter of recommendation for you and you don't need to see it um, because, you know, you're not you're not worried that they're trashing you or something, basically. So um, just, you know, know that most students waive their right. Just be aware of the fact that if you choose to not waive your right, then you'll have to answer this additional question here saying I've chosen not to waive my right. And I understand that that decision may lead my counselors or teachers to decline to write recommendations on my behalf. Honestly, I've never seen or heard of that happen, uh, even if you chose to not waive your right. So, um, you know, I don't think that's anything you have to worry about. But again, you just have to answer you either waive your right or don't waive your right. And then you just have to check off that you understand that this waiver or no waiver applies to all the colleges that you apply to. So basically, you only have to do the FERPA release once. You'll digitally sign by putting your name here, put the date, and then hit save and close. And that is the end of the FERPA release authorization. Super important that you do it. Super important that you answer each part of those things that you have to answer. And then once you've done the FERPA release authorization, which again, allows us to send your transcripts and letters of recommendation to colleges, you'll be able to log into Naviance and link your Common App with your Naviance account. And that is what Mr. Figueroa is gonna to talk to you about next. Hello, this is Bert Figueroa. I'm going to walk you through the Common App and Naviance account matching, as well as Naviance eDocs. So to start, you are going to have to go to this address, student.naviance.com forward slash C-H-H-S-E. It'll bring you to the Cherry Hill High School East Naviance student page. Then you click on student. If you do not already have a email and a password that you were given, um, or if you forget your email and password, you simply have to contact either Mr. Gamel or me, and we will help you um, get logged in. So when we hit continue, it brings us to our student page, and this is our fake student known as not real. So the first step that we need to do in matching Common App with Naviance is to click on Colleges I'm Applying To. And once we click on Colleges I'm Applying To, it shows you this uh, big red or pink, depending how you see it on your screen, uh, banner at the top where you can click on Match Accounts. Once you click on Match Accounts, it brings you to this page and you scroll all the way to the bottom and you would input your Common App email address. So essentially it's the email address that you used for the Common Application. Put that in, then you would put in your date of birth. You either type it in or you can click on the pop-up window. And once you fill that out, then you would click Match Accounts and it should match your accounts. Again, if you have any issues with your account matching, you can reach out to your counselor um, and any of us should be able to help you uh, problem solve in order to match your account. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna walk you through are just the Naviance eDocs. And it's important to note that all colleges um, to which you're applying must be listed in your Naviance account. So that's self-reported colleges or snail mail colleges, common app colleges, any college that you're applying to has to be listed in your Naviance account because this is the only way that we know that you've officially applied to that college and then we know to send your transcript to that college. So in order to add colleges, you simply click this plus button at the top right of your screen 
you can either type in the college or search from these drop down. It's much easier to type in. And usually when you're looking for colleges, less is more. So if I'm looking for a college that has Florida in its name, it's better just to type in Florida. And usually you get other colleges with this name. So if you, if you just leave Florida in there, you can scroll down, it looks like, and find the colleges that you need. Um, once you've selected the college that you're going to apply to, then you will indicate the application type. So there are different application types that uh, counselors will go over with you. And if you have questions about, um, you can certainly ask us. Once you indicate the application type or the way you're applying, which means early decision, early application, rolling, regular decision, any of these types, you will select that. And then you indicate how you're going to submit your application direct to the institution. If you've already applied, you can check this box. I've submitted my application. Uh, if you have not, you can leave that blank. And then you would simply click add application. As you can see, our fake student here has a bunch of different colleges uh, listed in um, their application list, their colleges list. And this is gives us you know, the other information we need as far as uh, to which colleges are applying, the due dates, the applications, um, whether or not students already applied, whether or not they're requesting transcripts, et cetera. So hopefully this helped you get started with matching your accounts as well as adding colleges um, to Naviance. Thanks so much. Hi, this is Mrs. Lynch here. And this is Mrs. Grossman. Um, we are going to walk you through how to request your letters of recommendation through Naviance. So first you'll find yourself on your homepage and you're going to click the link that says colleges I'm applying to. Here um, we've entered three different schools um, and you'll see them listed here. We scroll down to the letters of recommendation section. Okay, so what's important to note is before you get to this point um, in requesting a letter of recommendation from a teacher, you want to be asking that teacher ahead of time. So um, and at this point, you'd probably just be sending an email to a teacher or contacting them in some other way to ask if they'd be willing to write your letter of recommendation. So you want to make sure that they know that and that they have agreed to do that before you get to this point. So once you have received confirmation that they're happy to write a letter on your behalf, um, you'll go to Add Request. And here is a drop-down box which has all the teachers that are in our building. So we're going to start first with Mrs. Hunter. And in this, and, and in this example, um, we know we're going to be asking two teachers to write letters of recommendation. And it's important to, to realize that when you're in this process, because you can see here that with the schools that um, we have chosen, uh, they each have different policies in terms of how many letters of recommendation they require, or if they require at all. So we can see that Rowan University requires two letters of recommendation, but they'll allow up to five letters to be submitted. Uh, Temple University is optional as to whether or not you want to submit a letter, but they'll only allow up to one being submitted here. And then University of Pennsylvania, they require two and will only allow two. So we know that we're going to ask another teacher to submit our letter for Temple University. So for Mrs. Hunter, we're requesting Rowan University and University of Pennsylvania. We'll scroll down. Um, you can write a little note here if you'd like. Thank you so much and submit requests. Now we will go back to add request and we'll look for Mrs. Reinhardt. And here we can click all current and future because that will include the Temple University. So again, write a little note. Thank you so much. Please let me know if you need any information or a resume and submit request. And so once the teachers receive your request, through Naviance, this is now their access to be able to write their letter of recommendation for you and to upload it 
and send it directly to the admissions offices um, at the colleges that you're applying to. So you won't ever really lay your eyes on this letter at all. Um, it gets submitted directly through Navion. Um, but what's nice about this is that you could check back in to see what the status of that letter is. So um, you could see here where it will say requested. Um, once it's been submitted, it will say submitted so that you know um, the letter has gone. There are some students who might be interested in sending a letter of recommendation from an outside provider, for example, maybe a coach or an employer. Um, those people are not going to be listed in Navion, so you'd have to do that one of two ways. Um, you could do it through mail, and you'd give them a pre-stamped and pre-addressed envelope to be sent directly to the college, or if they're a Common App school, you can send them an email through Common App, and they'll be able to upload and submit their letter that way. Okay, so I'm taking you back to the home page, um, and under this important to-dos and tasks, you will see um, two links. They're uh, questionnaires, one for the student and one for the parent. Those are the forms that your guidance counselor will use um, to write a more detailed letter. So as your guidance counselor, we write letters of recommendation for all of our students who are applying to four-year colleges. Um, so we ask that, you know, you just give us the most information that you can um, and that'll just help us write a better picture. Yes. Of you. So you don't have to specifically request anywhere like in Naviance or in the common application that we write this letter of recommendation. Um, however, the common application will ask you to list your guidance counselor's name and um, and but there's there's no other place in Naviance where you need to actually request that we send this letter for you. And I and I think this this kind of sums up um, how to request letters of recommendation. However, you know, we always know that there's questions and, and, and confusion because there's so many moving parts to this. So you can always feel free to reach out to your guidance counselor and we're happy, happy to help you walk, walk you through the process. Hi, everyone. This is Carly Kiesler here, one of the guidance counselors at East. And I am Miss McLean, um, another guidance counselor here at East. And today we're going to talk about the Naviance resume, the transcript release form and self-reporting schools. Okay, so the Naviance resume uh, is located under the About Me tab in your Naviance account. Know that only counselors and teachers uh, and you and your parent guardian have access to this information. It can also be printed as a Word document for you to use in the future. You can use it to give to your teachers as well as your guidance counselors, um, when writing your letter of recommendation, as well as it's a great resource when you are applying for jobs. So we're going to take you through the steps on how to do that. So when you log into your Naviance account, you're going to go to the upper right hand corner to the About Me tab. Click on the About Me tab. You're going to see a list. You're going to go to My Stuff. Click on My Stuff, and you'll see where it says Resume. Click on that. Then you'll see it says Add and Update Sections. That's the section that we're going to be working on. So if you see, we already have Work Experience listed. So you would go to the right and where the plus sign is, and you'll see a list of um, categories that you can begin to fill out on your resume. Um, objective and work experience, education, volunteer, extracurricular, um, awards, athletic achievement. So we already filled out the work experience. Right now we're going to show you how to fill out um, athletic achievement. So you would write, let's say, swimming. And the month that you started swimming. And the year, we'll just pick a year, let's say 2017. And then to present, if you're still swimming. And then the number of hours per week that you swim, we'll just say maybe 10 hours per week. And then total hours would be 10, we can say 10 hours again. 
And then you can also let us let your resume know how many years you participated in that sport. So for today, we're going to click um, ninth grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, and 10th grade that you participated in the sport. And then you can put a description if you would like. You can put um, butterfly and brushstroke. And then add. And then now we have two categories. We have work experience and we have athletic achievement on our resume. And then you can always continue to add if you would like to and update it whenever you need to. So it is a working document, so you can change it as often as you like. And then when you're ready, um, you can then print it and then give it on, on a Word document. And then you can give it to your teacher or guidance counselor uh, to help write your letter of recommendation. The next section um, Ms. Kiesler is going to talk about is the transcript release form. Okay, so the transcript release form, um, it has to be requested through your Naviance account for each school that you wish to apply to. Um, and what we're going to do right now is just show you the updated form we are working with so far. And as you can see here, it's pretty straightforward and easy to follow. Um, you want to complete this form once for all of your colleges. So your, you know, your basic information, your name, your grade. Um, we do need to see that there's permission being given from your parent um, to have this transcript released. You can check all things that apply and what you're comfortable having your transcript released for. Um, that includes your college applications, scholarships, NCAA, athletics, or if there's something else, you have a space to write that in. Um, you can check off if you want your rank on all of your transcripts. That's something that you get to decide. Um, and we do have this new section here that if you're ranked in the top 15% of the class, you can provide your social security number to be considered for the New Jersey STARS program. And again, that is optional, or if you're not in the 15%, that's okay. You just leave that blank. Um, important things to note, the transcript released for colleges must be made through the student's account. Again, we put that everywhere because it's very important. Um, you can access your account and request transcripts from your counselor. Um, and also, that's where you'll be finding your letters of recommendations that you'll be requesting from your teachers. And again, there's a space for the student signature in D and your parent's signature in D. And then you would have to return it to guidance whether that be through Ms. Garson or Ms. Cook, and that's dependent on your last name. We will have more information to follow on this, but for now, we're just giving you an idea of what that looks like. And the last section we're here to talk about is self-reporting schools. So for self-reporting colleges and coalition applications, we provided the website here for you to see. Um, you ne will need to acquire your EAST transcript from guidance, and that will allow you to have all your official grades to report to the schools. You also will have to acquire your test scores. That includes the SAT, ACT, AP, and et cetera. Official test scores do need to be sent directly from your college board or ACT account. That is not done through guidance. So the way that you signed up for your testing, that is the same account you would be using to send your official scores to schools. Use your transcript scores and resume to fill out the online only applications. And the last big important note for this we have is be sure to update your Naviance list of colleges I'm applying to. Otherwise, your counselor will not know that you applied to your schools. Thank you so much for your time, and we look forward to working with you this year. And we're wishing everyone the best as they begin their college process. Thank you. Have a great night, everyone. Hi, this is Mrs. Lynch here. And this is Mrs. Grossman. And we are just going to walk you through how you would send your official score reports to the colleges that you're applying to. So if you took the SAT and you're going to be sending SAT scores, you'd go to the website collegeboard.org and log in. So it's the same username and password that you use to register for the SATs. Um, you would log into your account and you'll see a box um, that comes up and says 
send SCORE reports to colleges. So um, you'll have the opportunity to super score if you've taken the test more than once um, and say you did better um, in math on one date and then your reading score was higher on the other date, you can send both of those test scores. Um, and all the colleges in the United States are listed in the system, so you just send your scores that way. Um, you need a credit card. It's $11.25 for each school. And then um, if you took the ACT, the process is similar. You just log into your ACT student.org uh, website and send your scores that way. The cost for that is $12 per school. And new this year, ACT is allowing super scoring um, that hadn't been done previously, where they will send one score report with all of your highest scores. So that is something that you could choose to do as well. Um, it is important that you plan in advance for this because it could take up to two weeks from the time you've requested your scores be sent to the time that the colleges receive those scores. Um, so make sure that you think ahead, especially if there are deadlines coming up. You want to give enough time for that. And once you've applied to colleges, you can log into your student portal at each one of those schools to know for sure that the school has received the scores. Hi, I'm Ms. Han. And I'm Mrs. Walsh. And we wanted to talk to you tonight about college application types and the application fee waivers. There are several different ways you can apply to college. Early decision, early action, restrictive early action, rolling admissions, and general admissions. So early decision is the most restrictive form of early admissions. So what early decision is, is that it is a binding contract, so your student must attend the school if they are accepted. Students who do early decision can't apply anywhere else until a decision is made. Early decision acceptance rates do tend to be slightly higher than the rate for regular admissions, so that gives um, your student a bit of an edge if they do decide to apply to that school as early decision. Your students should only apply for early decision if they are completely sure that this is the ideal college for them um, because they can't change their mind since it is a binding contract, um, that they're re realistic about their acceptance chances and will likely get in, open to a backup school with an application deadline that will work if they don't get in, and financially prepared to handle the cost since, again, like I said, if since it is a binding contract, even if you are not able to pay for the school, you are still binded to attend that school. Students can also apply early action because it's not binding. They can apply to as many schools that offer their early deadline as they want. Similar to early decision, but again, much less stringent. Students are still considered for placement before those who use regular college admissions deadlines, but again, it's not binding. You do not have to commit to the school. Typically, similar deadlines as early decisions are offered, which is usually between November 1st and November 15th, but it's dependent on the school. Restrictive early action is also known as a single choice early action. Similar to early action, this is a non-binding contract. However, your student does not promise to only apply to that school until a decision is made. This will limit the student's ability to apply to backup schools until they know whether they get in or not. Rolling admissions is a first come first serve approach. So what that means is that applications are accepted during a set time frame, but they're reviewed as they are received. So acceptance letters are continuously sent. So those who apply later in the application window automatically have less of a chance of getting in, even if they qualify. So for students who are applying for rolling admissions, it's really important that you apply as soon as possible um, so that they have a better chance of getting in. Regular admissions is probably the most common type of college admissions. Schools set a specific deadline for all the applications, which is typically between December and January, and then they review them after all the closing date. Every application is compared to the others before any acceptance or rejection letters are sent out. So college application fees are not cheap, and so there are what's called fee waivers. Um, they are available to students who are eligible for free or reduced lunch. So if your student does get free or reduced lunch, please see your counselor for the application fee waiver. 
Our contact information is listed below, so please feel free to reach out with us, to us with any other questions, or you can contact your guidance counselor. Thank you and good luck. Thank you. Hi, this is Mrs. Schumann. I'm one of the guidance counselors here at Cherry Hill East. The first thing I wanted to talk about is the FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid. And this is something that both the student and parent must complete in order to be considered for financial aid. So this aid may come from the federal government in the form of a low interest loan, um, a deferred loan, or even an interest free loan. Uh, perhaps grant money might be available. And then also colleges use this to consider what aid they may give a student. And that could be in the form of maybe a job opportunity on campus. You know, sometimes parents will say to me, I, I don't know why I should fill that out because I know we won't qualify for anything. And you, and you may not with the federal government, but there may be opportunities at the college. So please consider doing it. The link opens up October 1st. So you can go on after October 1st and fill it out. Um, I will say that when you go to the website, it's best to either type it in directly or to go to our, our eboard, which we will be showing you in just a little bit, and use the link. There are some bogus websites out there where you will put in all of your information. They look like the real site. And then at the very end, we'll ask you for credit card information. So remember, there is no fee for this. So if they're asking for credit card information, you're at the wrong site and please don't put it in. The other thing I wanted to talk about is the NCAA Clearinghouse. So that's for any, any student who plans to play a division one or two sport at college. And what you need to do is go to the eligibility center and register there. There is a fee involved with that. It's about $80. And you can also review the academic requirements on the site. One thing that's important to note is that in order to have your transcript sent to the eligibility center, when you're in Naviance, you want to choose the NCAA eligibility center as a college I'm applying to. And this way we'll be sure to send your transcript to them for you. Hi, this is Mrs. Friedman. I'm gonna talk a little bit about scholarships. The page you're looking at now is our guidance eboard, and you can see that we have a whole tab just um, dedicated to scholarships on here. So as scholarships come in throughout the year to the East uh, Guidance Department, we will post them on this website. There's not too many right now in the fall, but in the winter and spring, they really roll in and we do have a lot of scholarships to post. You can also check out free websites like this fastweb.com where you can make a username and look for scholarships. As Mrs. Schumann said, with the FAFSA, just make sure when you're looking for scholarships, you're not paying for any websites. Um, you can use various free searches, but there shouldn't be any cost associated with searching for scholarships. A lot of the scholarship applications are pretty easy to fill out and it's not time consuming. So if your students do take the time to look for scholarships, there is money out there.